The big problem, however, are the hips. Uh, as you know, all ladies are concerned about that, and so I would think Lucy is too. And let's look at these hip bones. Uh, there are really three bones that fit together to form the whole pelvis. Uh, I brought along the right piece of the human pelvis here. It uh, fits right down here. And they're made of three different bones, the iliac part, the pubic part, which is right in front here, and right here is the ischium. These are the ischial tuberosities, and you are all sitting on your ischial tuberosities right now. That's what's supporting the weight through the gluteus maximus. Now, there's a distinct hip for apes and humans. And as far as I know, no overlap. You can't confuse an ape hip with a human hip. What's the big difference? Well, let me uh, bring up a drawing that'll help to illustrate this. If you look at the top, that's a chimp. And at the bottom, that would be human. Notice the iliac blades of the human go front to back like this. It almost looks like a steering yoke on an airplane when you get them both together, right? As you look at it, isn't that sort of like a steering yoke on an airplane? See the handle here and the handle here, upside down? Whereas the ape, the iliac blades flare out laterally. So if I put this in place, in the human, this blade would be here, and the ape, it would be out here. At the picture? This versus this. Now, why is that important? You need to have it this way if you're going to walk, as humans walk. Why is that so? <laughs> My students tell me that I was, at one time or another, able to use almost every item of clothing on my body to illustrate things. Handkerchiefs can make muscles. And if we have a muscle that attaches to the iliac blade here called the gluteus medius, and that muscle comes down from here to here, right across there, and attaches to this bump on the femur. Now, that, that's important because when we lift our left leg, think of an articulated dowel now. If you lift the leg, what's going to happen? If these are articulated joints at the hip, this hip's going to fall, isn't it? Lift the left leg, the left hip will fall. If I lift the right leg, the right hip will fall. What keeps this from happening? When I lift the left leg, the muscle that goes between here and here tightens up, and it keeps that from happening. See that? It's attached here. So if you don't have this orientation of the iliac blade, uh, you cannot keep your posture as you walk perfectly even. Uh, once again, you have to throw the weight back and forth to overcome this. Now, on apes, the blade is like this. I've exaggerated a bit. The same muscle, gluteus medius, comes over the back side now. Notice that? It's going down the back. And apes have a center of gravity in front of their knees. They want to fall over forward anyway. And so the same muscle keeps them from falling further forward. So you can look at the pelvis and tell whether you're looking at an ape pelvis that cannot walk anything at all like we do, or a human pelvis. The big question is, what kind of pelvis does Lucy have? Well, Stern and Sussman said, the fact that the anterior portion of the iliac blade faces laterally in humans, uh, he's talking at, this is facing lateral out here rather than over, uh, but not in chimps is obvious. The marked resemblance of Lucy to the chimpanzee is equally obvious. So you get the picture? The creatures like Lucy have the ape orientation of the iliac blades. Now, what are the evolutionists going to do about that? You're not going to believe this. Nova? Have you heard Nova? There was a PBS Nova series in which Dr. Owen Lovejoy, a very distinguished, famous paleoanthropologist, was involved. And he's looking at Lucy's skeleton here, and he's lamenting the fact that the hips are all wrong. They're supposed to be human-like hips, so you can walk the way the Latoli footprints showed she walked. But they don't look like human hips. They look like ape hips. What to do about this? Watch it. You'll get a big kick out of this. The ape that stood up? It was a revolutionary idea. We needed Owen Lovejoy's expertise again, because the evidence wasn't quite adding up. The knee looked human, but the shape of her hip didn't. 
Superficially, her hip resembled a chimpanzee's, which meant that Lucy couldn't possibly have walked like a modern human. But Lovejoy noticed something odd about the way the bones had been fossilized. When I put the two parts of the pelvis together that we had, this part of the pelvis has pressed so hard and so completely into this one that it caused it to be broken into a series of individual pieces which were then fused together in later fossils. So you see they were uh, broken and they don't fit together properly. Uh, they did speculate in the program as to exactly who was responsible for breaking the hip and uh, current scientific evidence suggests perhaps a deer stepped on it. Here you can see a deer foot stepping uh, on the bone. Isn't that a bummer? Uh, let's uh, see where it goes from here. Uh, this has caused the two bones, in fact, to fit together so well so that well. they're in an anatomically impossible position. <laughs> the perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bones seem to flare out like a chimp's. But all was not lost. <laughs> this is a power saw, friends. You may want to put your goggles on. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. He didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. Notice he's removing whole parts, not just cutting. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. It was a tricky job. But after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Look how perfect. You can read a newspaper through the hole. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. <laughs> yeah, now, this is what we call science. You can teach this in the public schools, but you can't criticize it, because if you do, uh, that would be religious. So... Uh, <clears throat> Well, I think perhaps the best way to uh, conclude is to let an evolutionist himself uh, conclude here. David Pilbeam is a very, very distinguished, and in my view, a very, very honest, uh, as many are, uh, evolutionist. And uh, he has looked at uh, the data, having spent a career uh, studying the uh, human fossil record. And in reviewing Leakey's book, Origins, some years ago, an American scientist he had a moment of uh, real candor. Listen to what this very famous human evolutionist has to say. My reservations concern not so much this book, but the whole subject of paleoanthropology. But introductory books or book reviews are hardly the place to argue that perhaps generations of students of human evolution, including myself, have been flailing about in the dark, that our database is too sparse too slippery for it to be able to mold our theories. Rather, the theories are more statements about us and ideology than about the past. Paleoanthropology reveals more about how humans view themselves than it does about how humans came about. But that is heresy. <laughs> wow. No creationist ever put it any better than that. 